So last time we left off by getting our clients to actually connect to the server. This time I'm going to be showing you how to actually properly set up the lobby as well as the waiting room and how to actually set up a script to store player data such as the player's name. With that said, let's jump right in. So the first thing we want to do is set up a new script and we're going to call this new script save and we're going to store it in a new folder called save. Then we're going to make sure it's empty and in the actual script we're going to start by setting up a const called save game is equal to user colon slash slash save game dot json. Now the way I'm doing this is I'm actually storing the player data on the client side. If you actually want to uh, prevent cheating uh, you should actually do this on the server side since doing this is a lot more secure. Now for this tutorial series, I'm not really focusing much on security or proper network architecture. If you actually want to learn more about this, then I highly recommend the tutorial uh, series by Game Development Center, where he actually shows you how to make a proper network architecture and shows you about player authentication. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, for this uh, tutorial for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna be doing all of this on the client side so with that said uh, let's get back to our code so we want to set up a new variable called save game is equal to an empty dictionary and we're gonna set up our ready function and we're gonna do save data is equal to get data which is a function we're gonna set up here in a little bit so function get data var file is equal to file dot new then we're gonna set up an if statement so if not file dot exist save game colon and then in that if statement we're going to do save data is equal to dictionary with a key of player name and a default value of a name then you can actually set up more uh, player data if you want such as color but for now this is what we're going to do and then we're going to do save game which is another function we're going to set up here in a bit and then we're going to set up well we're going to do file.open and then in the parentheses save game comma file.read and then we're going to set up a new variable called content is equal to file.get as text and a new variable called data is equal to parse json and we're going to pass content to it then we're going to do save data is equal to data file.close and then return the data and that does it for our get data function now we're going to do our uh, save function or, or save game function. So function save game var save game is equal to file dot new. Then save underscore game dot open save game. And then instead of doing file dot read, we're gonna do file dot write. Then we're gonna do save game dot store line. And then we're gonna do to JSON and we're gonna pass save data to it. So let me explain a bit on what we are actually doing here. The file.new is making a new file. The if not file exists is checking if the file currently exists. Then if it does exist, we are setting up a dictionary to store the player data like the player name and we are saving the game. Then we are opening the file so that we can actually read it. And then we are getting what the content of that file is as text and we are parsing it as JSON and storing that as the saved data. And then we are closing the file and returning the data. And then the save game function creates a new file, it opens the file and it writes onto the file and stores it as JSON and so forth. You can actually read up more on it by control clicking like usual if you want to read up on it. Now anyway, before we forget, we want to go to project, project settings, and we want to go into the auto load tab and we're going to search for our save script and we're going to actually click on the add to add it as a singleton. Now in my reference project, I do have the save script above the server script. So just in case, we're going to do that here as well. And yeah, now we're just going to go to our server script. I want to set up a new function. This function is going to be called function register underscore player. Then inside that function, we're going to do local player ID is equal to get tree dot get network unique ID. Then player data is equal to save dot save data. And then we're going to do players in the square brackets. We're going to pass the local player ID and then we're going to do is equal to player data. 
and that does it for our register player function. Now we actually want to call this function in our connected OK function up here. So make sure you do that. And now we're going to set up an RPC ID call. In this case, we're actually going to do an RPC ID call to the server, which is specified by the one. And then uh, we're going to set up what function we want to call. So we want to call the send player info and specify what we're passing. In this case, the local player ID and the player data. Now in our server side, we are actually going to set up that function. So we're going to start by specifying the remote keyword and then function sent player info and we're passing the two values that we passed back in our RPC call. The remote function is a keyword. Basically, it specifies the function as being accessible across the network. Now we're setting up a variable called players as an empty dictionary and inside the function we're setting it uh, we're basically passing the ID into the square brackets for that variable and setting it equal to the player data. And then we're doing an RSET call of players and passing players to it. And you can control click on it to learn more about it. And then we're doing an RPC call and we're calling the update waiting room function. And you can obviously control on the RPC to learn more about it as well. Now that does it for our server. Now back in our client, we are actually going to define that function. So fun, uh, in this case, it's going to be sync function update waiting room. And the sync keyword is basically almost the same as the remote keyword, except it's making sure that every uh, peer calls the function. So for, we're going to do pass for now. And now we're actually going to set up our player lobby. So in this case, I added a color rect and I'm making sure that the layout is set to full rect and then I just give it a dark color. Then in the center container, I'm adding a VBUX container. Inside the VBUX container, I'm adding a label and uh, making the text equal to lobby. And then I'm also adding the join button under the VBUX container. Then as so another, another child of the VBUX container, I'm adding a grid container. And then as a child of the grid container, I'm adding a label and a line edit. And then I'm setting the text for the first label to be name. And then I'm just renaming each label and line edits. In this case, it's going to be name label and name text box. And then I'm going to set up the grid container to uh, be two columns. And then I'm setting up the V separation and each separation to 15. Now with the name label, um, or in this case, the name text box uh, selected, I specified a min size of 200. And then I'm making sure that the label is set to center for the align and via align. Then I'm also giving a separation for the VBox container of 15. And then I just duplicated the name label and the name text box with control D. So in this case, I've made it so that I have an IP label, IP text box, a port text box and a uh, port label. And then I'm going in into each label and changing it to uh, what it's supposed to be. So, so for example, IP address and ports. And then I'm doing this the same the same thing for the uh, the name text box, the IP text box and the port text box to say things such as enter name, enter IP address and enter port number. Then with that done, I am selecting the name text box, going into node and specifying a unchained, sim a unchained signal. And in the lobby script, I'm doing, I'm setting up a unready var player name is equal to the uh, name label. And then I'm also doing this for the selected IP, except uh, at this point I realized that it should be the actual IP text box and the same for the selected port. So it should, we want to get the port text box. And I did change the player name equal to the name text box. And you want to make sure that it is the name text box, not the labels. And then I made a function ready. And then underneath the function ready, I'm doing player name dot text is equal to save that save data inside the square brackets. I'm doing player underscore name. And then underneath that line, I'm doing selected IP dot text is equal to server dot default IP. And then I'm doing selected port dot text is equal to str inside the parentheses server dot default port. Then in my join button press signal function, I want to do server dot selected IP is equal to selected underscore IP dot text. And then server dot selected port is equal to int 
and then in the parentheses selected port.text. Then in the uh, text change uh, signal function, I am doing save that save data and then the square brackets I'm making it equal to player underscore name is equal to player underscore name dot text then I'm doing save that save game I then went to my server script and changed the default IP and default uh, port to selected IP and selected port now I'm actually setting up my waiting room and I accidentally added it as a control node. So I'm just right clicking on it and clicking on change type and making sure that it's a pop up instead. Now I'm just renaming it to be waiting room. Then with waiting room selected I added a color rect as a child and made sure that the layout is set to full rect and then I just changed the color uh, to whatever color I wanted. I added a center container as a child of the waiting room and a VBUX container as a child of the center container. And then I added a label as a child of the VBUX container and set the text to be waiting room. I then added an item list as a child of the VBUX container and a button as well. And then I renamed the button to ready button. Then with our item list selected, I turned on auto height. I went under the columns option, set it to same column switched on, fixed column to 200 and an icon mode to top. I left the icon size the same, but I did change the custom constraints to be B separation to 10. Then I added some items. In this case, I'm just setting the text to be player one, player two, player three, and player four. Then with that, I went under rect and set the min size to 200. Then with the label selected, I changed the align and be align to center. And then with the VBUX selected, I changed the separation to 15. With ready button, I changed the text to say ready. And then I simply saved the waiting room and the lobby uh, folder. And then I just renamed it to fit uh, Goldet's uh, styling. Then I simply added a script to the waiting room where I'm setting up a unready var player list is equal to dollar sign center container slash vbux container slash item list and this is just selecting the item list Then I set up a function ready where I do player list dot clear and then I'm doing function refresh players and passing players to it then uh, I'm doing player list that clear once again and setting up a for loop in this case It's gonna be for player ID and players and then var players is equal to players inside the square brackets We're doing player ID and then another square brackets square brackets and then it's gonna be player name Then we're gonna do player list dot add item player and then a call comma uh, null comma false and you can control click on it to see what those values stand for then back in our waiting room I'm adding the waiting room into a group called waiting room with that done I then went back to the lobby and added an instance of the waiting room into it and then I just made sure that it was actually hidden and with that done I just saved and then I am actually just checking my scripts here and then in my server script I want to actually do get tree dot call group and we're calling the waiting room group and then we're calling the refresh uh, players function and then we're passing players to it and then with that saved we can actually check if this is working so we're gonna run our server so server started and then back in our client if we first have to go to editor settings, scroll down into the network options and under debug, we want to change the remote remote port to something else. And if we run, uh, we have this where we can actually change the name now. In this case, I'm going to put Reus and then I can click join game. And as you can see, we actually connected to the server. However, our waiting room isn't actually working and that's because we actually forgot to add the code for it to actually work. So we're gonna add a function show waiting room inside this function. We're gonna actually uh, write some code to show the waiting room. So if we wanna start by doing on ready var waiting room is equal to dollar sign waiting room. Then back in the function, well actually before I do that, we're gonna do this for the button also. So on ready var ready button is equal to dollar sign waiting room slash center container v box container ready button to select the button. Then in the function, we're gonna do waiting room dot pop up centered. Now I am adding a press signal for the ready button in the lobby script. So I connected that signal and then I'm just doing ready button dot disabled is equal to true. 
now I'm just going to rerun the server once again and the client uh, once again as well. Before I do that, I am actually adding the space in the join game button and now if we click join button, it does connect to the server but the waiting room doesn't work again and that's because uh, we forgot to actually call the show waiting room uh, function when we press the join buttons. So now it actually does call the waiting room but that doesn't actually update with the player's name. So uh, let me just check my code here. The server actually looks to, looks to be fine. So it's something in our client. And the issue is that in our server, we actually misspelled uh, the update waiting room function. So fix that. And now if we run, we have to rerun everything. So if we run, uh, we get another error. And that's because we have a typo here. So make sure that you change and fix that. And now we rerun everything once more. It should work. So as you can see, it actually worked this time. So if we click ready, it does disable the button. And I'm just re I'm basically launching another instance of the client to see if it's actually working. And as you can see, it did update with the second player. And uh, yeah, you'll find the links to the GitHub project down below in the description. And yeah, as always, if you like the video, leave a like and consider subscribing. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys later.